Hey guys, and welcome back to all the not included. Clay's amazing space colony simulator extraordinaire. My name is Twitchy, and we have been on the LZ Alpha for 159 days. Uh, sorry, sorry, let me say that. 1,159 days. We are very nearly on our 1,160th day, and we have got a little bit of a problem kicking off over here. Whoa, what a, what a weird zoom feature all of a sudden. Hey, what? Whilst we're here at the beginning, should we have a look at the, the blueprint? Let's see what we got. Let's see what we've got. Uh, I'm just going to grab the oxalite because whilst we do indeed want to have a person coming up and joining us at some point, we are not ready for that time. I suppose we could get them living over here, but yes, we are not quite ready. One thing that I am ready for... Oh, look at this. It's all turning over. It's all doing bad stuff. What I want to do first is press F2. F2. Uh, do, you, do you see this guy over here? He's kind of just a little bit too much. If we come up here, we add these together. It's about 1,600, give or take. This uses 12. Why have I got two hooked up? So let's go ahead and first disconnect these. I will try and do something a bit more fancy than that in a second. But the next thing I need to do is to wipe out these two. Because we need to go in there and repair those pipes. Uh, the big problem that we actually have right now is the fact that, as you can see, our water is almost overflowing. And when these overflow, it backs up. It all gets very, very awkward. We need to do a whole a bunch of stuff to fix that. And I think... I think I know what I am going to do. I'm going to grab one of these insulated pipes. I'm going to copy it out using the B button. Uh, and I think we're going to drop it in here. Yes, indeed. We're going to drop it. We're going to drop it right there. In fact, I'm going to grab another one of these. And we're going to go around here. And we're going to try and try desperately to make an overflow. Although I've just realized, actually, I want to have this. This, this, this. this is not quite right. This is not quite right. The reason that I want to put it back here is I do want to have at least one tank's worth of uh, backfill, just, just in case. You never know. You never know when you're going to need some. So I'm going to do that, and I'm going to do this, and we're going to bring this pipe down here, down and across. So what should happen with this particular setup is that it will try and use the bridge to pull the water over into here, right up until the moment that this is overflowing, much like it is now, at which point it will start passing the water down here to here. And I want to bring this all the way down because we've got another problem. We have got a problem over here. The problem over here, as you can see, we've got some overheating occurring. Uh, there is a lack of water in this area. That's right. I am going to bring this all the way down here and we're going to pop it off uh, right here. Okay, the reason we're going to do it on this side is because it will drop on this cooling loop. The cooling loop will get the petrol flowing. Hopefully, this will actually be a solution to a lot, a lot of our problems. So now that we've got the start and the end in place, I think what we need to do is grab this ladder, pull it on out, and just just, just go down. We're just going to go down. Yes, indeed. All the way down here? I think all the way down here. We're going to come and try and be in line with this point over here. That's going down into the hot stuff, so may maybe not. Maybe we'll only go down as far as this, and then we'll send the pipe over and down and in. But I do know the one thing I want to do is that this overflow water is going to be coming through about 95 degrees, give or take. So I want to make sure that it's insulated pipe all the way. Uh, if we don't have insulated pipe all the way, uh, we're going to start warming the base up. I'm not really about that, despite the fact that that is what we have been doing for the longest time. And now we just get to sit back and wait. Thankfully, the first thing that's happening, Mad Frank coming through. Hopefully, he's going to repair the stuff over here. We can we can hope. We can hope. Uh, uh, as I say, I've disconnected this second battery. And hopefully, if I press F2 here, this means that this little power line is going to start getting some more power. Because the big problem that we've got, the big, big problem that we've got is the water keeps circling around getting colder, but because we don't have the power for this liquid shutoff valve, because the two thermal aqua tuners are producing too much, uh, consuming too much power, uh, because we can't get the li th li liquid shutoff valve there's some words there, honestly. Because we can't get the liquid shuttle valve working, it's just going cold and cold and cold, and that's why we've got the broken bits here. I don't know how to fix that. I do know how to fix that, but it's awkward. The way that we'd fix that would be to put some more thermo piped liquid sensor things up here uh, and read the temperature of the water before it goes in. M maybe right here. Maybe even here would be good, but of course there are... Um tiles in the way and you can't put I don't I don't believe you can put one of these no on the space of the tile so we'd even have to like pull the pipes out round further and stuff it would get very awkward very very quickly but I tell you what I really want these done much more much more quickly than this no 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 no, no. don't don't call night time just now I want to get these fixed and fixed right now one of the main problems that we have at the moment is not enough water coming around and through this so I'm kind of hoping either dumping the water down below will aid us in the actual production of water but because there appears to be some sort of water deletion bug going on down there let's go down and have a look because there seems to be some sort of water deletion bug like these petroleum generators produce polluted water the polluted water drops down and produces a little 
little bit of dirt down there. You might be able to see it. There's some more over this side as well. And clean steam. The clean steam comes up through the steam turbines and gets dropped off via this liquid vent down below. Somewhere in that process, we're losing mass. I'm not sure where. I like look it goes down it produces some water that then comes up through the mesh tiles and this will turn over as and when it can but as i say losing losing mass somewhere along the line and i'm not sure why so my big hope is actually that these part this pipeline that we're putting in here will be a a backup an overflow something to make sure that this never actually runs out of power of water the next question of course is how do we go through here i was going to be like hey let's do this and not go through the hot stuff right so let's let's try that i'm worried about this this hot biome down below, so we'll just cut across. What could, what could go wrong with just cutting across? Okay, I'm not sure if all of these are going to be able to get reached, but whatever, we'll, we'll be fine. We'll be fine. Whilst they're working on that over there, I think the next thing we can do is, as you can see, the hydrogen is flowing around here, so I am going to rip this out. I've noticed that it, on my last episode where we built this hydrogen generator, a lot of people have been coming in, having a look at the video and running away rather quickly. I think I think people want a tutorial for this. I might go ahead and make one at some point. If you do, give us a thumbs up, let us know. Not that, oh, I suppose comments would be better, actually. Let, let us know how you feel about that but as I say we've got to take that out and there's also something missing from here I want an atmosphere sensor and if we press F4 you can see that there are uh, a little area right here where we can fit in an atmosphere sensor without destroying everything that's pretty cool uh, I will also want to get uh, the automation signal coming from that into these pipe into these gas pumps here so that hopefully we won't be draining these batteries when there's no power to be used I'm gonna destroy this ladder and this ladder I'm gonna put a door in its place uh, in the ladder's place so that we can then rip down these igneous tiles and hopefully get in there without spilling all of the hydrogen everywhere. About all right, they've all been replaced. It really doesn't take long for things start to overheating over here. For things to start overheating over here, uh, I'm not entirely sure why that is the case, but you know we're gonna put those tiles back up at the highest priority. Like aluminium should be fine, surely. They're all made out of aluminium here. Uh, I don't know. There'll there'll be a system in place that could do better with this. I'm thinking like maybe steel right here because it's only up at 75, 76, 77. You know, it, it could it could be fixed. It could be fixed a lot better. Uh, but it's okay. We'll put that igneous rock in place. It will stop the heat spilling out because that's that's what's happening the heat as you can see here is spilling out and warming up all this other area would it be nice to have a bit of cooling going on here i'm not sure if we even have a cooling loop in place in this place well i mean maybe this all right those uh those tiles got closed in and literally like two seconds later the temperature is down below 75 beautiful beautiful hopefully they'll get these fixed and move on i really want this to be a high priority though that that pipe's really important Okay, back at the saga of the hydrogen generator. We are going to um, break our way through into here. Also, I have asked for this power transformer to be ripped down because I want to upgrade it to a bigger one so we can push out 400 at a time. Oh, look at this. Maybe we want to destroy these amounts of wire here. Well, not these two, but these two bits of wire here definitely need a little bit of destruction. Here comes Mr. Line, hopefully, to come and get these automation wires in place. Are there any gases going in or out? Ooh, this is not great, actually, if I'm to be honest with you, but we'll deal with it. There, there will be be some damage to these guys up here but as it's only iron ore i don't actually mind all that much as long as these get done pretty quick okay whilst we're waiting i'm gonna select this here i'm gonna i'm gonna cut these here we'll let the gases build up uh, and then whatever is in here we will deal with once everything's got bit got fixed because look we're 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 damaging right now it's not quite where i want to be Something keeps happening at the top here that means these solar panels keep getting entombed and I'm not sure what it is. Okay, back at the hydrogen generator here. I'm just going to deconstruct this airlock. That's going to be cool. Uh, we've got ourselves the atmosphere sensor. If it's above a one kilogram of hydrogen, it will start pumping. Of course, we're not quite there yet because we've got like this uh, this power transformer to put in place. And of course, we need to work on the hydrogen generators. But it should now be okay to just push it across like that. And we'll see what comes our way. There's going to be some destruction. There's going to be some problems. But hopefully... Fingers crossed, it's the type of thing that we can deal with. Okay, there we go. That's the first batch of all of the uh, wrong elements going in. Hopefully now we've got nothing but pure, pure hydrogen coming through. 
Okay, you remember I was saying I was going to do something about this second thermal aqua tuner? Well, I've got an idea. If I press F2, if in fact, if I press Shift F2, you can see that I've got this power line, well, rather, this automation line running into these power transformers. And these are going, hey, well, I've got too much power, pour it out into the grid. Now, that sounds like a great idea, but wouldn't it be also great if we could be like, hey, if I've got too much power, power up the second thermal aqua tuner. Let's see if we can't get some more water on the go there. That's going to be my idea. We'll see how it runs. We appear to have a bit of a lock up here on the one pipe that actually is doing any work. So let's go through and drop a few bottles out of here. No, cannot. Why not? Marked for emptying. Okay, the, the red is a little worrying, but it's okay. It's going to happen. Why is Mimi complaining about starvation but actually going to the toilet? This uh, this very much seems like the wrong way around to do it. I don't know about you guys, but I I would I, if I was starving, I'd just I'd just wee myself on the way to the toilet, on the way to the, the kitchen. Like surely, surely this isn't the the best way. Okay, Luna came along and let some of the water out, and it appears to have solved all our issues for us. Beautiful, beautiful. What color, what temperature are we getting the water out of here? Doesn't want to tell me. Okay, 19 degrees. That's that's good. That's good. I kind of wanted it to go up and do some chilling, though. Found another water deletion bug. So we've got, uh, let's have a look in here. Where is it? Steam, uh, insulated gas pipe contains, I mean, it is only micrograms of steam, but if we press F4 and watch it come out of here, uh, you can see it opens, it comes down to the bottom, and then it just disappears. It's gone. It's completely gone. So maybe that's got something to do with where all my water's going. I mean, obviously, this is just one small side setup. Maybe the same sort of thing is happening out of here where it's dropping less than a microgram out, less than a gram out. I don't know. I don't know. I actually don't know. So I just found a little problem here where I disconnected the power line. I'd also used the all filter on this tool filter. So I'd managed to snip my uh, my cooling line down. And as you can see, this is causing us a little bit of troubles. We've got to try it. Oh, no. Oh, no. How is this going? OK, 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 OK. We got we got to try and get in there. We've got to try and do something about it. I'm going to put a manual airlock up. We're going to go through the wall. And I think the thing that I'm going to do is we're going to put some insulated tiles around. Oh, it's not the best that we can do. We'll do that, though. We'll do that. We'll put some insulated tiles around and we'll see what we can. Oh, no, it's, it's going to be bad. I, I want to stop this erupting again and adding more heat to the system because that's a problem right now. Okay, whilst we've got mixed gases in here, definitely going to snip that line. Oof. Okay, we got a box within a box just in time. Let's turn those back off. No need to have them even there, to be honest. Uh, and the uh, the hydrogen vent hopefully is over pressure right now. And then we should be able to just pass this through everything and bring the temperature crashing down. We had a big temperature spike there, but it worked out. We had a bit of a problem with people trying to stand inside the hydrogen vents, but it worked out a-okay for us in the end. Okay, let's have a look. Is this all getting nice and chill now? I hope so. I hope so. It should be starting to bring it down uh, to to the point where we'll break the gas line, that's fine, but hopefully the uh, the ethanol will just condense out. Okay, the situation could have been terrible, could have been horrendous, but thankfully we've got it now. So the battery got repaired and therefore these petroleum generators are turning over quite hard again. These are, the temperatures are quite high. That's the problem here. The temperatures are very high. 275 is the, the problem area. 256 is where we are at. So we're going to have to keep an eye on that, but I think mostly we're doing okay. Most of this water line has been put in place. Come on, oil save. Do it. Let's do it for me. Uh, most of the, the water line has been put in place apart from this tiny little stretch here, which hopefully will be done today. Looks like we're finally at the point where I can now put these walls back. It's, it's about time. It's about... No, it's not. It's really not. What am I doing? We've got to take these these bits down, else it's just all useless. So we've had this constant trickle of water coming up and over here, and it built up quite high into here, and then uh, one, one of the, the ranches came through, and now look at all the steam that we've got. That's cool. Not coming from where I want it to come from, though. How are we doing over this side? Are we finished? We are finished. Oh, this means, yes, we've got water flowing. Let's go up and have a look. This is what we've been working on all episode. As you can see, this, uh, this, oh, wow, what have we got overheating over here? What? Why have we got overheating over here? It doesn't really matter, to be fair. So we've got this water coming out of here. What? It does kind of matter. Why? Why? <laughs> 
I mean, I want to assume it's from the heat, but like, I, I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll just have to leave with that. Anyway, so uh, this liquid reservoir is allowed to fill up. This one is completely being emptied. It's kind of draining all the way down here. And it's now going down into our hot box. Now, the hot box, unfortunately, is going to get slightly overwhelmed. Oh, man, look at all of this. The, th th this is going to get extreme pretty quickly. Let's see if we can... Uh, Come in and cut that lot out, and hopefully that—that's not enough. It's nowhere getting. It's nowhere near enough. This is. This is gonna get painful. This is gonna get painful. But anyway, as I was saying, we're now dropping water at quite a rate through here. So I'm expecting this to actually get too cold at some point. We've got the petroleum generators turning, and that's beautiful. I want to get a sort of a temperature readout over here. The land is at 200 degrees. So what temperature is the petroleum coming through here? 215. All right, beautiful. That's far enough below the 250 that this should start spewing out a little bit more consistently. Oh, yeah, even on regular speed. I'm looking at the thermosensor temperature. It is just dropping like a rock like a rock 0.1 a second i think i'm gonna go with a uh, doors that should be opening around about now yeah look at that that's that's gonna be that's gonna be brilliant which should mean that we're having a more constant supply of petroleum going in look at this we're, we might even build up a, a small store down here but does that mean that up the top here we're starting to get power mm, not quite not quite we've got constant load of four kilowatts where where is it all where is it all Okay, I think we're going to have to let these gases go now. It's uh, it's not ideal because obviously we're going to get a bunch of ethanol into our hydrogen generators here. But I think we should be able to just about live with it. Uh, we should be able to, to make the repairs. And hopefully as long as people get in here and do the clean. Oh, thank you very much, Luna. As long as that actually comes across and does uh, gets done very well, then uh, it should work out well for us. There is going to be all sorts of uh, thermal conductivity issues at the moment. But we will work through them as we, as we see fit. Oh, this was... This was quite the disaster that we fa thankfully managed to uh, to rectify. So yeah, we're at the point where the cool box is too cold to support the steam generators, but this means that the uh, thermal transference that's going on from this loop to this loop is even greater than before. So you can see that the thermo sensor is currently at 271, but is dropping so much faster than the last time. Ah, oh, it's great. It's wonderful. It, is it going to balance itself out and we're going to have a wonderful self-regulating system? That is the hope. So we appear to have a nice stable setup going on down here. Now, the temperature at the top is slowly increasing, but the temperature down below is so low that we are getting quite a uh, constant supply of petroleum coming through. If we have a look, you can see it's actually backed up through the pipes and we don't seem to be able to put a kick out as much. This battery and this battery are um, mirrors of each other. They're connected up through this horrendous system uh, to be connected to together. This battery controls the petroleum generator and this battery controls the power outflow back into the grid. And we're set up in such a way that this is actually uh, operating within the bounds of the petroleum generator. Like, if, if you see, this is like 98 and 70, and this is 85 and 60. Okay, yeah, just, just outside. They'll kind of move down a little bit on the range. This means that when this gets fully atop up and the battery wants to uh, spew out a bunch of power, it can do, and these petroleum generators will continue turning over unless, we, you know, the drawer is so low that it actually tops up the battery. But that never happens because as i say this one gets up far enough and then this starts pushing out all the power where is the power going well it's going up the top here of course ah oh, man it's still not doing well enough but what i want to do here you see we got this one being all full and these are full i want to i want to try and fill this one up as well but you can see i've got a, a little dig errand at the top here go go miss go yeah indeed i want to try and clear out enough space that we can start uncovering our solar panels we could just go ahead and do it straight away but i'm worried about the amount of power that's not in the cooling system as you can tell this regolith is at 275 degrees that's that's very hot very hot Oh, look at that. So th these guys can live up to 275, and this temperature is 280. Oh, so close, so close. Okay, with the power flowing, shall we do something stupid? I do enjoy doing something stupid. Let's put that across and let's all let, let all of this open. Any moment now? 
Is it like no? Okay, here we go. Here we go. It's it's all going to be falling down. We're probably probably going to lose all of these dig orders. But I want to be like G nine, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna select all of this bottom edge here. And the moment it all drops, we'll just be like, hey guys, come along and uh, dig all this up because we want to get this open as quick as possible, and hopefully not overheat a whole bunch of stuff. So these four batteries here appear to be the door. They're going well. It would have been nice to not completely drain the battery during one cycle because. Because what happens if I now have to close it due to a meteor, like, really quickly? But we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. Why isn't this one working? There he goes. Away he goes. All right. Hopefully, this will mean people can start digging through. And by people, I mean the robots can start digging through to the other, other people in front quite quickly. Else we're going to end up with some very hot liquids. I mean, we're going to end up with very hot liquids anyway, but we'll see. Okay, here comes Mr. Lender Hand. Hopefully, uncovering this first one and then... Then they can all do some work. I don't know. We'll find out. We'll find out. It's quite the stack of regolith there. In fact, one of the things that I want to do is start moving. Just rearrange the whole bunker door situation. It needs to be moved up one so we don't have this airflow being um, piling up regolith above it. That that that's something that we don't want. So we'll move that up one. But also, wouldn't it be great to move a, a duplicate through here? So maybe we want to actually move it up two. I don't know. We'll we'll figure it out. We'll figure it out. Miss, that is very good. But can you go the other way? Let's put eights on this side. The uh. This side has solar panels, look. And wouldn't it be great to get all this fully charged? Oh, no. You see these two batteries here? That's these guys. Ah, so more batteries. More batteries. Well, I'm not entirely certain they are going to need it because this is quite an extreme start. But we're going to put one down anyway just in case. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not expecting them to always have this amount of, uh, of regolith to move. In fact, I'm expecting most of the time to just have a small dusting on top. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Our doors managed to close in time. I don't, I don't even know when it was that the time was on, on us, but it was obviously overnight at some point. Ah, oh, beautiful. Very good. Two little projects just to wrap up. I want to try and move the doors up, as I said. I'm just going to go with the one. The duplicates can climb around. That is fine. And down below, I want to move this pump over to being underneath this pump so we can drop a door, a wall down here, sorry, put the ladder down here, and then have this, put this bit separate from the petroleum... Um, petroleum cool unit because this keeps getting flooded out it floods the grooming station and then it will all drain out down into the pump it's okay but long term it's just too much to, uh, too much downtime on the grooming station so yeah i'm gonna work on that as well as soon as uh, someone comes along and does it we go up four what's mad frank so uh, doing now that's so important well it turns out it was breakfast i suppose that's fine Okay, things are starting to get moved here and deconstructed. I think one of the things I'm going to have to do is deconstruct this little pump here because we're going to have to take this line out before we can start moving around with this cooling loop. This is definitely one that needs to sort of stay in place. We could probably bring it across the top and do a little jump there. Let, let's do that. Let's do that. Uh, anything that we can do to make this little move uh, easier will just pay dividends a thousand times. You know, you guys know this. Oh, look, pressure damage. Oh, no, this is bad. This is bad, yo. Let, let's get the cipher into it to, to break this open and then i'm gonna put these in as nine and we're we're gonna try oh this yeah this 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 could go really bad really quickly we need to uh to, to shore up the bottom under here oh it's two thousand kilos down there oh wow oh wow no wonder where are the people where are the people here they are come on jim goods please mimi what are you working on uh are you are you down here doing this all right beautiful beautiful also deconstructing i mean the who doesn't like a little bit of destruction amongst the creation after all? Let's turn the repair off of these two just for the moment, just until we get everything down. Because I want to, I want to rip this one out anyway, so that we can get the full force along the bottom, the full uh, solid floor along the bottom. Oh, there we go, beautiful. All right, let's turn that auto repair back on. Put the brick down next to it, and of course, oh, how is the steel already spoken for? I know how the steel's already spoken for. Wait, we need to stop that right in its tracks now, up here. Woo. That was nearly a super, super horrific oversight. We need to be able to put this steel uh, pump back down. A few awkward moments of trying to replace this bridge without disrupting the flow. I'm hoping this has worked out well. Okay, yeah, it's looking good. It's looking good. There's a gap there. Not amazing, but we'll live with it. 
as always, is taking a lot longer than expected, but I now have a petroleum-free path. Well, I mean, obviously there's a lot of petroleum here, but it avoids the petroleum boiler here. Uh, as soon as everything's swept out, this should uh, once again become locked up tight and never have to worry about it again. I am wondering why this is saying that uh, it's the gas is blocked. Uh, of course, we need to go this way. I see, of course. The problem that I had over here was this high-pressure gas vent. You can see that we've got 50 kilos of steam here. Uh, and I just want to pump out all the stuff from here because it's almost always carbon dioxide and steam. A little bit of sour gas occasionally, but that's what the door crushers are for. Okay, so I'm going to end up passing it down to this lower level because as you can see, there's not 50 kilograms here. There's a, a, about seven. That should be fine. I believe these go up to 20, these high pressure gas vents. Uh, everywhere else is a much higher figure, much, much higher. We've got 50s and 60s and 70s, but hopefully uh, this will do well. Okay, I'm sure this is going to cause us all sorts of problems, but that's another system put in place. Tweaked, made better. And now we look to the stars. I want to move this up and I want to move this across. Uh, I'm going to slightly rework all of this so that we can start opening up this other area for a better solar farm. Hello, we're almost instantly over pressure with carbon dioxide here. Do you think someone should tell Mr. Line that when these doors are closing, it's generally for a reason? I'm going to hang on for as long as I can because hopefully she'll just move away of her own accord. Okay, beautiful, beautiful. All right, that's, that's good. Uh, Mad Frank is also on it. I didn't realize there was so much steel to go around. Uh, the good thing about this job though is once you've got a few laid down, once you start uh, deconstructing the bunker doors underneath, it becomes a, a self, uh, self-supplying process. Well, if that proves anything, we've got ourselves a bit more of a defensive roof on the go. It's not getting any damage through to these airflow tiles anymore. And with that, I am going to say thank you very much for joining me for this adventure, ladies and gentlemen. I will see you guys next time where we've got a big water problem. We've got water building up in this system over here and it's not discharging because it can't cool down quick enough. But I will see you then when we're going to deal with that. Bye. Thank you.